One more thing I want to show you real quickly is I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, the Windows Firewall. So the very first time that you run that application from within Visual Studio or if you run it directly as an executable, you will get this little pop-up that will come up and ask you, you know, would you like to configure Windows Firewall to allow you know, public access, private access, etc. I'm sure you've seen that for other applications. What that does is it builds a rule, an inbound rule, inside of the Windows Firewall environment for the particular application. So here I'm looking at it from the context of running from within uh, the Visual Studio debug host. What you want to do, and either do this as part of setup or, you know, just for your testing purposes, you can come in here and do it, is for that host, the WCF host, be able to accept incoming connections, you need to go into the rule. So this would, and this is the, in the scenario for if I'm running it in debug, if I'm running it um, directly, I just go to the WCF direct host.exe rule, and I need to go to advanced. And you have this thing called edge transversal, and what this does is it controls whether or not uh, the application will respond to inbound requests from a, a source outside of the NAT that the application has not previously talked to. So basically a brand new connection from someone I don't know. The default is to defer to the user. If you want to kind of get rid of that and just make everything work automatically, you would set this to allow edge transversal. So just a little heads up to be aware of. So now let's demo the other side of the equation and set up the client. Just a couple quick hits to let you know how we've configured things. I went ahead and ran the command line WCF utility, the SVC util, uh, to generate all of the proxy code that I need to connect to the service that's running inside of my host. You can see, you know, it's picked up the definition for the Intel service. So there's my enter, my send Intel, my leave. Again, this is all WCF specific goo. Uh, here's my proxy class that allows me, for example, to call enter and send and, you know, leave. So again, very WCF specific stuff. Similar to the host application, I've created a wrapper class around the PNR P functionality called peer resolver service. You pass in the host peer name. I create an instance of a peer name resolver. And as I mentioned previously, I run this synchronously. So I call resolve synchronously. A better implementation for a UI app certainly would be async. I pass in or create a peer name by passing in the host name and saying I want to look for an unsecured peer name. And I'm looking inside of the global PNRP cloud. I make sure I get a result. Maybe the host isn't up and running. So uh, results could be null or there could be no, you know nothing found so I'll throw you know uh, an exception there and then if I do actually find a peer I just have a little wrapper class again to hold the results and what I do is I take the first result so in the case of unsecured peer names I can actually have multiple test peers, for example, existing out there in the cloud. So I'm just assuming that if for some reason I found more than one peer registered, I'm going to grab the very first one and I'm going to peel off that fake DNS name, the peer host name, and stick that into this results class. And then every peer can also have multiple endpoints uh, associated with it. So again, I'm just making the decision that I'm going to grab the very first one and pass that. In a, a different type of application, you may need to you know account for this and handle it differently or have some way of figuring out which one you actually want. And there's other things you can do with private peer names and things like that that we'll talk about in future screencasts. But just be aware that that's one thing you have to kind of deal with uh, in these simple types of scenarios. And then the real action for getting WCF and working um, is handled in my Intel client class. And so the, the magic uh, happens inside of the start method. So I call start and pass in the host peer name. I use that peer resolver to resolve the host name and get a result. And as long as I have a result, what I'm going to do, and again, when you look at the actual sample code, the download demo code stuff, um, there's a lot more air handling, a little more nicety in using some of the other application features here. But I'm just going to focus on the WCF implementation or WCF setup specific things here. So what I need to do is set up a binding uh, to connect to that remote service. And again, we know it's uh, uh, NetTCP, so I'm just going to create a new NetTCP binding. And uh, as we know from the host a demo. We don't have any security set up on this. So that sets up our binding. And then I need an endpoint. And this is where the PNRP point piece, again, plays a huge role. Is we'll go ahead and say I have an endpoint address. And what I'm going to do is create a new one. And I'm going to format up a string again, if I can type. And what we'll do is say, hey, it's net TCP again. 
and I need a DNS name, and oops, and I need a port to listen on, and we know that the end of the URI is Intel service. And so then what I'm going to do is say, hey, we're going to not, uh, sorry, we're going to use my peer record and grab its URI, so that's that fake peer name, host name, DNS thing that's going to, you know, it's created for me dynamically. And then we know that it's got a port that it wants to listen to. And so that will create a endpoint that I can then tell my infrastructure I want to listen to. And what I basically do is I have a property here called the Intel service that, you know, will expose all the methods that the UI can use and things like that. And basically what this is going to be is it's going to be an implementation of that Intel proxy class that was automatically created for me. And I just need to pass in the binding that I want to use and the endpoint I want to configure on. And at this point now, I could say to, in my client application, is I could say, hey, Intel service, I'm going to call the enter method now and send my, you know, agent profile information to log into the application, or I need to send some Intel, so let me put my Intel data in there, or I'm all done and I want to leave the application. So very quickly, totally dynamic, totally based on PNRP, I don't need to have a real DNS name, I've created a host, and I've now found that host from my client, and I'm consuming that. What we've shown you is how to set up a client, how to set up a server, and do a one-to-one -one communication. I could easily change those WCF services over to be duplex, and that would allow a very peer-to-peer-esque type of communication pattern instead of a client-server pattern. But what happens when instead of just playing tic-tac-toe against one other person, I want to chat with lots of other people? Well, purely from Bob's perspective, this might not be too bad, right? I could set up a duplex WCF service and I could connect up to all the different people I want to chat with. And as they chat to me, I'll get their message and then I'll send my message that I'm going to send to all the people that are part of the chat. But what happens is obviously this needs to be duplicated for each person in the chat. Now, for a smaller chat network of only five people or whatever, this probably works fine. But you can think of peer-to-peer -peer scenarios, not necessarily chat-oriented, where I really need a wide net as far as how I cast and broadcast messages. I can, again, do this using WCF, using the same techniques we've shown you, but there is an easier way to do this for broadcasting messages, and that's what's called the WCF peer channel, which builds on top of the native P PNRP uh APIs that we've looked at in these past several episodes, but it gives me a WCF layer over the top of that that allows me to quickly and easily broadcast messages to anyone who's part of my of my peer mesh. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next episode. Hopefully you found this one useful, laying the foundation for more interesting applications as we keep moving forward. So hopefully I'll see you next time when I talk about WCF's peer channel.